Isn't it frightening when you see a blank piece of paper, especially when you're going to work from imagination? And that's what we're going to do today. Now, up to now, we've had some form of reference to work from. We've been out on location, and we've done pencil sketches, and of course, we've used photographs. But now, we're going to create our own scene, but it's all from here. Now, what I've done, I've decided to paint a snow scene, but before I've drawn it onto the big piece of paper, I've done these thumbnail sketches, uh, in pencil, of course, on an ordinary drawing pad, and this one is, I, I put a tree on this side. I was, I was a bit worried about it. Perhaps there wasn't enough snow there. Remember, you're creating, so you enjoy this. You do what you like. It doesn't matter if you do two dozen of these. It's all part of the creative part of drawing and, and making a scene. Now, this one, I like this one, actually. Um, I like the two people here. I've sort of got a hollow that we go through. The composition's nice, but I thought I'd have a bit more snow, so I then went on to this one. And I've got bags of snow there, you can see that, all the way up to these middle distance trees. I've still got the people in. But then I thought well, it's a bit plain. And did this one, and I didn't know it was going to be the one I liked. I was just sort of drawing them. But this one, I seemed to fall in love with it. It seemed to work. I've got quite a bit of snow. I've got a couple of people sort of coming up the hill. I've got quite a distance there. And I've got these trees, and I do like painting trees. So I was happy with that, and I've, I've decided that we'll do this. But what I have done, I've drawn it first so we can get started. But before I actually start through the magic of television, you're going to see the scene that I'm imagining. There. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the finished picture looks a little bit like this. But seriously, the reason for showing you that is to give you a point of reference while I'm actually doing the painting. Let's get on with it. Well, I'm going to start by mixing some lovely snowy sky colours. Now, by snowy, I mean one of those days where you've got a lovely dark sky and it seems to go all yellow nearer the horizon. Now, the colours I'm using, ultramarine and crimson and a little touch of yellow ochre. Now, just a little bit there. Now, uh, I'm going to put some yellow ochre in this one, ready. It looks dirty, doesn't it? I haven't washed the brush. doesn't matter. After all, that yellow ochre will be mixing with all the blue anyway as I go down the paper. So it doesn't worry me. That, that's, that's all I need for that. Put the brush back into there. That will be the blue sky, or, or the, the, the dirty sky above the yellow ochre. Now, the way I'm doing this, I'm wetting the sky first, wetting the paper first, and I'll start at the top, and the, the wet paper will help the paint all run together as it mixes and flows down the paper. It's called wet on wet. So first of all, I've mixed the colour because if I'd have mixed it after I'd wet this, this paper could have been drying. So always mix the colour first, then wet the paper. So I'm now going to wet the paper, and literally all you're doing is painting the water on. Now the water, I've got a little bit dirty because of mixing the colours. Now this is good because you can see it. You can see the way that it's going on. And you just spread it everywhere. You don't let try and get the water out of the brush when you put it on. When you're getting it out of the water pot, you just let it be full of water and then paint into the sky and just go all the way down. Now you'll find I'm working on rough paper and it's difficult to paint on to start with because of it being rough. But this doesn't matter, there's no time problem, we're not worried about the rain coming over because we're outside, in fact I should say the snow if we're outside, and we're not getting cold. It's all nice and warm inside the studio, so we just paint away. Now that's almost finished, there we are, just this last bit down to here, and then we put the colour on. Right, now, here we go. The dark colour first. Oh, gosh, isn't it dark? But don't worry about that. It's got to be dark, it, because it does go lighter. The paint dries lighter. And so, just put it on, and it will run. Incidentally, leave some of the trunks. When I was painting the water, I did leave some of the trunks some of the branches 
I left some of the branches just without painting the water on them. The reason is that it will leave little bits of white paint, or white paper I should say, which will appear like snow, just little bits of snow. I've added a bit more yellow ochre into this now. Remember I'd mix the yellow ochre. And a bit more yellow ochre down here. Oh gosh, look at that, that really is a sort of wintry sky coming down there, isn't it? And want to watch that tree trunk. It all mixes together simply because it's wet to start with and it's down, it's all running downhill. So as you paint, it does mix. I just want to go into that trunk a bit or otherwise we might get a line there when we paint the tree trunk over the top. Just a little bit more yellow down here. Now that's all run down with the paint, with the water. Just a bit more over here. To there. Just into the tree. Oh, I want to watch that little bit there. <gasps> I nearly messed that up. You've got to watch that little bit because I want snow on that, so I can't paint over that and the same down here. Now, while that's all run down, I must take some of this away, and I've shown you how to do that before. Either on the side of the paint box or on a tissue, just let the brush dry out, and then it picks up all the surplus paint that's run down. It's really all it is, it's, it's just kept running and running. It's got to stop somewhere and it stops where the paper's dry. And, but it does build up because it's still running down. But that's it, I'll leave it like that. And you must, of course, let it dry. It's got to be dry before you carry on painting. Now the background trees, or, or in fact they're not the background, they're, they're really in the distance. These trees do very simply and just let the brush dance along. Actually they may be a bit bright. If you get something that's too bright, just, or too dark, I should say dark, not bright, just get a bit of tissue and just take it out. Just a little bit. Now that's a good, good thing to do, but don't do it too much. But if you feel you just want to soften something because it's a bit dark, do it with a bit of tissue. Now, the trees, I'm doing this with a smaller brush than I painted the sky, by the way. And the trees are, you, you've got to think trees when you're painting these. You've got to imagine. Remember, it is imagination. And imagine a lot of trees, almost a wood in the distance, just disappearing over the hill there and coming back again. Just imagine this happening. Now, what I've done as I come into, as I come down into the snow area, I haven't drawn anything. Now, if you want, because I'll, I'll be doing this, well, from imagination, of course, um, but I'll be doing it as I'm working and just seeing things happen. But on the other hand, if you feel that you want it, some lines, some pencil lines, that is, just to give you an indication of fields, then do it. It doesn't matter. Never worry, incidentally, about pencil lines showing through a watercolour because it is all part of a watercolour. Um, some people are a bit concerned about pencil lines showing through, but it doesn't matter if they show through they're part of the painting. I might even put a suggestion of a tree. Now that's still wet so you can go into it and look, just suggest a tree there and um, perhaps another one there. Now, I hadn't intended to do that. Oh, I've put two trunks there. That's nice. I hadn't intended to do that, but this is... Th remember, we are creating. This is what happens. You've got to know roughly what you're doing with watercolour, um, because once you've put your colour down, like I have there, you can't take it up. But as you're going in something like this, you can, in fact, create this as you actually work and go along. Now, I've got a couple of people, remember, that we want to put here. So I'm going to leave an area there 
Uh, I'll put a hedge that comes and follows down here, but I, I want to leave this area not painted with the hedge so that if I decide to put the people there, the hedge won't run through them. Oh, just remembered that snow. I mustn't forget we've got snow coming round there. I did nearly forget that. Now, I'm putting branches out from the main trunk as I paint. And in areas, certain areas, I'm leaving little bits of white. There's a little bit of white. I shall leave that there. Always make sure you've got enough colour to do something like this because you want to keep it wet while you're working. So that branches... Now, in fact, I'm going to get even... want a smaller brush to get the smaller branches. So I'm leaving them there and just continuing until I feel that the, br that, that the brush is too big. Now let's come round there, just put a bit of... Oh, I mustn't forget that one because that one is starting to dry. This one. There's a tree behind that, which I shall be painting very shortly, but we'll leave it at the moment until we finish this. Now, this is better. We're getting, getting these branches in. It's the main shape that you're after at the moment, and the main shape... Now, that's still wet. I can just about make that trunk. You can see there it's running into it, uh, but it isn't ru it, it, it's running OK. We're almost where it's too dry to paint into that. When you get into that position, it will make funny shapes and run back on itself, and you want to try and avoid that. Now, I'm going into the smaller brush still now, that's the rigger brush. We've used this in previous programs. And you can see how I can now work smaller branches. You've got to be careful how far I decide to come over. I think we've got to have people there. Yeah, I think that's far enough. Just have a few more coming underneath there and these down here. And I've got the other side of the tree to do, which I shall do next. You'll find I always do right-handed trees because it's much easier to paint that way with the brush than it is that way. And so now I shall work these branches running through and up. Make sure some of them go right out of the picture because obviously they're continuing and growing up. through there. Now, you're, you're creating this as you go along, remember. You're not having to copy from something. And it, it really sort of gets you involved and you, you're sort of, oh, you, you, you're feeling like a tree. You're growing like a tree. Now, the big trouble is that you can start to overdo it and work too much at one time without carrying on with the rest of the picture. I mean, at the moment, I'm enjoying this. And these branches are just happening as I'm painting, and I, I feel as though, you know, it's my tree. I've created it. But I've got to stop, because otherwise I'll just get too much uh, at this stage into the tree when we've got the rest of the painting to think about. We're not just painting a tree, we're painting a whole scene. So I'll leave that. Oh, I've got this one to do, but I'll certainly leave that big one. Now, there's another tree that I had around here. Now this one I'm doing with just the small brush. It's only a small tree, but look at that. Isn't that lovely? Just look at that. It really sort of bubbles around and goes into these trees here. It's still a bit wet, this which is good because they're merging together. And look at that lovely feeling. It's because, see this brush is on rough paper, or I'm working on rough paper, and when this brush hits it, it springs and jumps, and then you get that lovely, lovely feeling of, oh, you, you can almost feel the, the branches working themselves. Um, now, they're dry, so I can paint over the, the feathery branches, uh, all this sort of dark area that we see when we look at a tree. 
in the winter. Um, and it's, you've got to take the brush in the direction that these branches are going or growing. And I'm changing colour a bit there. Incidentally, that colour so far is the colour of the sky almost. Uh, I'm going over the trunk. You can see that I'm going over the trunk. There's always some bits of autumn leaf left. By the way, that is light where the sun has caught this tree. So I'm painting that lighter through there. Now I'm going to paint the hedge. Now, we mustn't forget that the hedge has got snow on it. So we've really only got the, the sort of brambles and the bits and pieces that are in a hedgerow uh, that are uncovered. The rest, we must leave white paper. So we're almost painting it out of the snow. Let, let me show you. Um, let's start up here. And the brush is just flicking out of the top of this snow area. Now, you can use a smaller brush, this little rigger brush, just to bring, while it's still wet, to bring these little bits out so it all becomes part of the, this sort of area of brambles and twigs, leaves. Now, this is important. I'm making that dark round there so that that is making the snow look even whiter and it gives the shape of the snow that's been blown up against that tree. But if we just give a little bit of suggestion of earth, and again, the brush is just jumping around now. Look, it's lovely that now. Just put a few little bits out. Oh, just sticking out, that's lovely. We could do with a, perhaps a little bit of odd color there. I'll just add a little bit of green to that. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back to it in a couple of minutes. Right, while we're waiting for that to dry, I must tell you about painting on the radio. I'm often asked to teach people how to paint on the radio. It sounds daft, doesn't it? Especially when it's so visual. But it's amazing. This is where you use your imagination. In fact, I was asked to organise a competition for a, a, a national radio programme, and I described a landscape over the air and the listeners, using their imagination, actually painted a picture from what I described. Quite incredible. In fact, here we are. This is a picture that I, I described. Uh, this is one of the winners. I mean, look how detailed that is and how near it is to the actual scene. And this one, not as detailed, but notice how the blue uh, goes into the distance. That's, that's very good because the blue recedes. And this one, it's, well, it's very impressionistic. It's a watercolour, and it does make a nice painting. But this is all done from imagination. In fact, it's amazing how imagination is there to be used and how different people create things differently. Right, let's get back to the painting. Um, we've got all the snow to paint now, of course. Uh, and at the moment it looks, oh, it looks like virgin snow already, doesn't it? But we want to put some modelling into it. And one of the things about the trees, they're nice and dark silhouetted against this snow, and it really gives that lovely crunchy, crisp feeling. You can almost feel as though you're treading in this, but we still must put some, some tone work in it just to give it a bit of modelling. But notice how the distance goes back. It goes back, now we've got the warmth in, in the hedge, and all around here, the warmer colours, and the distance has gone back because it's blue colours, and they do go into the distance. So let's start and put this modelling into the snows. Done very simple. Um, in fact, the more you fiddle, the worse it will get. You must not fiddle when you're doing this. You've got to keep your fingers crossed and hope that you've got it right the first time. It's almost, <gasps> here we go, that type of thing. But don't worry, you can manage it. What we do, we've got a, the contour is coming down here. In other words, the, the bank is coming down 